Welcome back to Quantum Mechanics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about the correspondence principle. I'm going to go into a little more detail, so hopefully you can understand what this is and why it's important for quantum mechanics versus classical mechanics. All right, so let's look at this picture right here. So first of all, let me just tell you that Typically, when we talk about exemplifying the correspondence principle, the perfect model is the harmonic oscillator, which we have a quantum version that we've looked at so far, and then also we have the classical harmonic oscillator. Now, this in the solid red, this is actually the wave function, squared at least, for the, the zero-point energy of a quantum harmonic oscillator. And essentially, this is the probability of finding an electron, say, um, between two points in space. Okay, so highest right in the middle. That's your, your quantum probability. In this dotted line right here, this is your classical probability. You can see it's actually the opposite. The reason why it's the opposite is because if you're talking about a, a ball kind of rolling up the hill, down the hill, and so on and so forth, it has the highest kinetic energy at the base, so it's going to be moving the fastest, so you're least likely to find it there. It's more likely to be found on the walls where it's moving slower because it's its kinetic energy is being, con being converted to potential energy. So you're more likely to find the classical one on the sides. And so you can see that as you go from quantum to classical, you're going to shift the probability to the sides. Okay? Now, what is the energy eigenvalue for the quantum harmonic oscillator? The quantum, that is. The energy is given by h bar times omega, and then times this sum, n plus 1 half. We're going to concern ourselves with this n for a second, okay? This energy. Because typically when we talk about our, our atoms, we're going to be using energies of like 0, 1, 2, maybe up to about well, 4 or 5. Um, we're, not, we're certainly not going to get into the thousands for that matter, but let's just, let's just deal with this right here. Let's solve this for n, okay? And you'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. I'm going to divide through both sides by h bar omega. So my quantum harmonic oscillator energy divided by h bar omega is equal to n plus a half. Now let's just subtract the one half over to the other side. So the quantum energy divided by h bar omega minus a half, that's equal to the energy level n. All right. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to factor out this h bar. So I'm going to have one over h bar times the quantum energy over omega minus a half equals n. <coughs> All right, why did I do that? Well, let's take this formula, which is the energy of a classical harmonic oscillator. So why are we doing a classical harmonic oscillator? All right, over here on the right side, this is my energy expression for a classical harmonic oscillator. So this would be kind of like a wrecking ball. So if you had a wrecking ball, it's a ball on a chain, and you can move back and forth like a pendulum and it hits a wall, basically, to demolish buildings. But that's a classical uh, entity. And its energy is given by m times omega squared times the amplitude squared over 2. So one way to think about the correspondence principle is you say, what happens if I take a classic species like this wrecking ball that clearly doesn't need quantum mechanics, but I give it quantum treatment? So what I do is I take this expression for the energy of the classic harmonic oscillator, this wrecking ball, I'm just going to plug it in for the quantum energy. So I'm going to take this expression and just plug it in for E here. So now I have 1 over h bar times m omega squared a squared over 2 omega. All right, and then I'm going to subtract that one half, which you will see in a minute is not going to do anything, equals n. So that's my energy level. So one basic way to state the correspondence principle is if you have a classical particle, such as the wrecking ball, which is hardly a particle, way bigger, and you say, what happens if I treat it with quantum mechanics, give it a quantum treatment? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this energy expression for the classical uh, species and just plug it in for the quantum right here in E. So if I do that, I'm going to get 1 over h bar times this whole expression, m omega squared a squared over 2 omega, and then minus a half equals n. All right, now notice here I've got omega squared over omega. I can just cancel the omega, right? I can cancel that. 
and then that gets rid of the omega in the denominator. So now I have one over h bar m omega a squared over two and then minus a half, and that's equal to my energy level. So the question is, what is my energy level? So to get some basic numbers here, let's assume we've got a wrecking ball that's only one kilogram, okay? Its angular velocity omega is one radian per second, and the amplitude is one meter. So my n is one kilogram times one radian per second times one meter squared, which doesn't do anything because it's one, divided by two h bar, so here's your two, h, h bar, uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, they're, uh, when you see the answer here, it doesn't matter if you use h or h bar, it really doesn't matter. They're on the same order, something on the order of h bar, minus a half, that doesn't do anything. And you get that the energy level is pretty much on the order of 4.7 times 10 to the 33rd. Okay, so this is an absolutely monstrous, enormous number. Just to put it in perspective how large this number is, suppose that if we had n equals one, let's analogously, let's say that's one meter, all right? Now imagine one million billions, one million billions. So a light year, which is the distance that light travels in one year, is 10 to the 15th meters, okay? So if n equals one is one meter, then one light year goes with an n of about 10 to the 15. Now square that light year, don't double it, square it. That's 10 to the 30th. So basically, if you have 10 to the 30th, that's a light year squared. And then the classical energy level is a thousand times that. Okay, so the point, this might seem useless to you, but the point is, when you have a classical particle, like a wrecking ball, which is way heavier than this, oscillating back and forth, and then it crashes into a building for demolition, the quantum effects, you can't, they're not even perceivable. We don't really have instruments that can perceive those. If you were to track a runner, a football player, or a track and field, whatever guy running, and he's trying to, you know, make some time, quantum effects are not going to make the difference between him getting into the NFL and him not, or making the Olympics and not making the Olympics, okay? Or winning the gold medal or the silver medal in the Olympics. It's not going to make any difference. It's really not necessary to use quantum mechanics, although it does technically work. And basically what the correspondence principle says in short, so if you look at this, so I have a bunch of energy levels here, okay? Th this quantum harmonic oscillator, you can see in red the various energies that goes up and down, up and down. And there's a lot here. I don't know exactly how many it is. We could actually count these up, although it's not really worth it. But you can see there's some energy gap between each one. There's some energy gap, which we call delta E. What the correspondence principle says is if you let n go to infinity, or just really, really high, like a classical system, then the energy gap goes to zero. Okay, the energy gap completely disappears whenever you start dealing in classical mechanics. So this limit right here is just another way of saying you don't need quantum mechanics to study classical species. Okay, you just don't need it. It's not necessary. Okay, now I went into a little more detail here and showed you some math as to why it's not necessary, but the reason from this perspective that it's not necessary is your energy level is astronomical. There's no, there's no, there's no need to use that to study the oscillation of a wrecking ball back and forth. All you need are classical Newtonian mechanics and equations. All right, so hopefully the correspondence principle to you makes sense. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.